Welcome back to Invest Global. Today we're discussing investing in Poland. Now, I find this market very interesting, especially from the perspective of someone who's always traveling around to different countries looking at, okay, what's emerging, what's developed, what are the frontier markets out there? Currently here in Tbilisi, Georgia, just got back from Batumi, Georgia on the Black Sea. And it's quite interesting, right? So I will actually be in Poland in uh, late July of uh, this year. And I'm very, very interested in what's going on also in the stock markets. But the main thing for me is real estate. Today's video is going to be focused on the stock market. And uh, there, there's many different factors when it comes to investing in one individual country, right? So when you say investing in Poland, it's a very blanket statement. Are you investing in a business? Are you investing in a publicly traded company? Are you investing in one individual person, right? Like, are you hiring someone? Uh, what are you doing, right? Are you investing in a commodity producer? Are you investing in a house? Are you investing in a massive developed building, commercial real estate, residential real estate? It's a very blanket statement. And I do plan to make multiple videos on this moving forward. Now, basically on this channel, what I talk a lot about is uh, global investment strategies. So whether it's blockchain technology, whether it's commodities, whether it's emerging markets, all these different things I talk about on this channel. And today I'm going to be focusing on Poland specifically. So if you didn't understand uh, what's basically happened in Poland since 1992, They've essentially seen over the these past, what, uh, right around 25 years, consistent economic growth year over year of right around 4% year over year, right? So this is something that I find very, very interesting. Yet we're seeing, uh, you know, since here in, uh, what is this, you know, right around 2000, uh, 2007, 2008 area when we saw, saw that all-time high, um, really just a market moving sideways, right? Just consolidating towards the side. Well, all these other macro indicators, in my opinion, point towards a boom in Poland's economy over the long run. Now, obviously, if you're someone who's watching this channel who normally you're just looking at the commodity market, like you're just looking at, you know, uranium, lithium, gold, these other things I talk about, um, or if you're into like crypto, like blockchain uh, projects, we're seeing a very volatile market. But when you're investing in an individual country, an emerging market, which honestly, I would say at this point, uh, Poland is a bit more of a developed market in between that emerging market area. But um, as far as their actual... Uh, as far as our stock market, I would say the stock market itself is still kind of in between the emerging market and developed market, right? So this is the thing when you when you put a blanket statement of an individual country is blank, that is basically stating that all the individual assets inside of that country is developed or is emerging. I think it's more on a sliding scale, right? So maybe you could say um, real estates, maybe like the physical businesses in Poland are a bit more developed. But I think the, uh, you know, when you look at things like EBITDA, when you look at price to earnings ratios, these companies are trading at ridiculously low multiples, especially when you contrast this with Western markets, more, I would say, like overdeveloped markets like the US, like Canada, like UK, like Australia. Don't get mad people from those countries, but they're just honestly looking at it objectively. When you see those markets hit new all time highs and multiple indices consistently over the past couple of months, uh, it's, it's definitely a cause for concern. That's where I look towards diversifying out of those countries, which I already personally am. I know a lot of people, you know, they're very consolidated in their home country. So if you're a U.S. investor, if you're a German investor, if you're a French investor, um, you might just have equity inside of that individual individual country. And that's why this channel is all basically about is diversifying outside of your individual country. And in not only like in just stocks, not only in just like individual like countries equities but looking at things look at all different investment sectors even alternative investment sectors like art um or or you know just whatever it is right this is all what we talk about on the channel but for me currently i like emerging markets frontier markets and crypto like blockchain projects um long term also obviously the commodity market is pretty crazy but the point is we're seeing new all-time highs and all these different indices and all these different more kind of overdeveloped markets yet in poland what we saw was this rise here and then a significant retracement back down um, like I said, I will be visiting Poland at uh, the end of uh, July. Uh, from here in Tbilisi, Georgia, I'm heading to Armenia to check out some real estate, then flying to uh, Ukraine. From Ukraine, heading to Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, kind of some of the Baltics. Um, and then from there, more Czech Republic, uh, Central Europe type area, which I, I would classify, obviously, Poland in, in Central Europe. But again, what we're focusing on in today's video is a, what it, what is really going on. Obviously, this is a macro view of Poland, but um, what am I personally looking at? Um, what I like to look at is some statistics. As I said, as an investor, I like to look at things like EBITDA, which most people don't even understand what it is. Um, if, you're, if you're confused about this, it's a little bit more of a complicated topic, so I can make a video on it. Let me know in the comments if you don't know what EBITDA is. But essentially, um, easier way to explain it is price to earnings ratio, right? So what is the company from a value standpoint, right? So when you take out all these different metrics, um, what are they actually valued at? Um, and, then, and then multiples on that they're trading on. So when I'm looking at a, a normal market like the US or Australia, not an emerging market, right? 
these are what, where they're trading at 20 plus times multiples. Crazy, in my opinion. Like that for me is not value. But when I look at somewhere like Iran, when I look at somewhere like Nigeria, or um, you could say Laos in Southeast Asia, these are markets where they're much more, I would say, in between frontier and, and uh, emerging. And the, the multiples are tiny, right? So you're literally seeing two, three, four, maybe five X at max multiples in those countries. And in Poland, the average is right around four to five percent in multiples. Now, this obviously changes on a year to year basis. But um, what I look at is, is I contrast that that statistic with and obviously you should do your own research in this. You shouldn't just take my word for it. This is obviously for educational purposes. But um, in, in my own personal research, when I'm looking at okay, investing in a market, um, I like to look at things like GDP. I like to look at things like population growth, like fertility rates. Um, and when you see here, obviously, when you look at uh, debt to GDP and all these different things, like on the actual balance sheet of the country, I think Poland is very compelling because right around 50 percent, while other countries are insanely over leveraged, I think in the current time, especially, um, you see this nice rise in the GDP in Poland. So you saw this kind of lows down here. Um, 1995 and then a massive growth there. So just nice, massive growth. But this is the thing is you always have to realize there's always two sides of the coin is government debt in Poland has increased. But still, when you when you're looking at that in a vacuum, maybe you say, oh, this chart, it's not a good country to invest in. Look at this government debt to GDP, like in other just to France, you don't even want to see what it is to the US. I won't even pull up that chart. Maybe another video will do that. But a Poland versus France, it, it's literally minuscule. And then you look at this chart. So GDP um, per capita, Obviously, U.S., France, and Canada is up there. But what you have to understand is when you're looking at kind of a not even a diamond in the rough, like just kind of an undervalued um, company or an undervalued country or an undervalued whatever it is, a piece of real estate, you have to understand if you're buying at the top, like at the United States, when, when the GDP per capita is at the max, that's when I would be scared. I, I kind of like to invert what a lot of people look at and, um, and look at it from that point. So um, market cap of domestic companies, you can see here, United States is massive. Um, Poland is a blip. Peru is even further down. Malaysia, France, Canada. Okay, so market cap domestic companies just been moving sideways, as I said. Um, there, there are a lot of other things I can go in into this video, but I just kind of wanted to lay this out for you. Um, what I personally look at when you're looking at it, obviously the WIG 20 is essentially this uh, index on these uh, top 20 uh, companies by the actual liquidity. So that how liquid are these companies? Um, and that's what we're looking at as kind of that, uh, that key factor. But just personally, what I also look for um, in emerging markets is I like to go into this with the context of understanding things like the U.S. dollar index, understanding things like the 10-year treasury yield and crude oil, because those are really the, the main things that I look at as just far as macro indicators, uh, kind of to paint the picture. And then I can go into an individual country and look at, OK, based on what I see in these, these other indices, how is this performing? Then I look at other things like uh, obviously um, some, some other statistics right in the market. So um, if we look here, the number of companies, 426, um, capitalization is 1 billion, 252 million, uh, quite interesting there. Um, you can see that I, I have downloaded some of these reports, I will not lie to you, because uh, I'm, I'm very interested in, in a lot of these markets. So uh, I recommend you doing that as well. Um, again, I can do a more detailed, in-depth video um, on some of these things like the main stats here. But um, if we see the uh, Euro exchange rate here, 2021, 4.48. Um, we've been consistently growing here. Uh, if you look back at uh, 1993, it started off at 2.39. Um, and I think there is a lot more upside. Now, obviously, along the way, nothing goes up in a straight line, right? It's always kind of this staggering growth. And especially with this consolidation sideways, um, I do think Poland is undervalued overall. Now it always depends on your time frame, right? So if you say, hey, uh, I think gold's undervalued. Well, do you think it's undervalued today or do you think it's undervalued over the next 20 years? That's my question to you. And it's a similar point of view with emerging markets, um, especially things that are not as volatile. I have a very long-term perspective on, right? So even in blockchain, obviously, I have a long-term perspective, but uh, this all depends. What are you optimizing for, right? So are you someone who's 50 years old who's just trying to, uh, to preserve capital or are you someone who's uh, maybe 25 years old? Um, and, and they're looking to grow their capital over time. And, and that's where you're looking at uh, value investments in general. So uh, this is uh, another thing that I also look at is, is kind of the new listing. So obviously in the United States, they call these ICOs, or sorry, not ICOs. That's in the crypto market in 2017, you had ICOs, so initial coin offerings. Uh, now we're talking about IDOs. I was just recording a couple of videos today on um, launchpad projects that let you get in early on a crypto projects um, while still having security and basically innovating on these things that happened in 2017. But in countries, when you look at, okay, what, companies are going to be listed publicly on the stock exchange. Typically, that's called an IPO. Now, I'm not exactly sure in Poland. I'm pretty sure they still call it an IPO, but um, you would have to ask a Polish person personally. I am, I'm not Polish, um, but uh, you know, it, it all depends, right? So I think on like a global perspective, I just can, like in my mind, I think of them as IPOs. Like if I'm taking notes on a country, 
um, and I'm looking at, okay, like what, what, what are the statistics? Um, typically I like to back test a lot of these things and look at, okay, like what were the debuts in 2020, 2019, all the way back to a 2025 or sorry. Yeah. 20, 2005, <laughs> um, you know, what are the statistics and then kind of contrasting them now um, and then looking at it like that. So those are just kind of my, some of my thoughts on uh, the market here. Again, I will have everything we talked about linked down below in the description. If you have any questions, any comments, let me know down below. Also, you can join the Telegram group, which is linked in the description. Um, if you have any questions and you want to reach out one-on-one uh, -on -one to personalize, um, typically you'll speak with a member of the Invest Global team, and then you can reach out to me. Uh, but the, the email is down below, which is contact at investglobal underscore IO. Besides that, comment section or Telegram, uh, that's the place to go. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date, hit the notification bell because it's time-sensitive content. If you're watching this video in 2031, 10 years from now, hey, you never know where Poland's going to go, but in my opinion... The trajectory is positive, right? I, I am bullish on Poland overall. I'd be curious what you guys think about that. So let me know. That's all for this one. As always, invest global. And until next time.